On this episode of The Silly Kitchen, I'm going to show you the easiest butternut squash soup that I've ever made and that I make all the time because I love soup season. So five ingredients, a little bit of seasoning, and you are gonna have a delicious butternut squash soup. Okay, so the five ingredients that you need. Obviously, a nice, whatever size butternut squash that you want. Shout out to Hurley's Market. I got this giant butternut squash there and they have amazing products. So if you need some produce, if you need some corn that they're famous for, go to Hurley's. Um, but this is an amazing butternut squash that I'm excited to have. So ingredient one, obviously, you need a couple of carrots, a couple of onions, and you need some coconut milk. One can is good, but leave that aside for later because we don't need that right away. And then your favorite vegetable stock. Uh, you can use chicken stock, the low sodium one, the regular one, whatever works for you in terms of a stock, but that is all you need. So let's get started. Okay, so, oh, you need a pot too. What I do is first of all, put all of my ingredients together. Um, first you need to peel your squash. So grab your peeler and just get going. Um, if you make soup like I do, I like to make it so that I have enough to put in the freezer and enough to eat for a couple of days um, or even share with some friends. So uh, if you don't want to have as much soup as I enjoy, then maybe get yourself a smaller squash. Uh, you can cut down the carrots and the onions and just make a smaller version of this. Uh, but I go big or go home, so oh my gosh, this is gonna take me forever to peel. Uh, maybe we'll do like a little fast forward reel right here. I don't know how to do that yet, but uh, just peel, peel, peel and get all of the skin off of your butternut squash. Okay, so we don't need these peels. You don't wanna chew on those in the soup, so get rid of that. And then you can just chop up your squash. It's a little bit hard, so make sure you have a good knife. Um, chop it up into whatever size chunks. You don't have to worry about them being even because um, they're gonna just go in the soup. And oh my gosh, guys, I picked a really big one. Ugh. I have a very sharp knife, but holy am I working. Okay, so I'm gonna do some slices and then just whatever size chunks because this is all gonna get pureed down anyway. So you don't really need to worry about them being any sort of size. And then just put all of that in your pot because all this ingredients is just gonna go all together. I'm just gonna move this aside for a second. You wanna have a couple carrots, big, small. It's just gonna add a little bit of a different flavor, but also give you a little bit of sweetness. Um, I just wash my carrots, I don't peel them. Um, I don't think you need to, just give them a good scrub. And again, whoop, don't let one fly away. Um, just cut them into nice big chunks and throw them right in there. All right, onions. This is again where you get to decide, do I want one onion, two onion, three onions? It doesn't really matter. You're gonna get a great flavor if you put two or three in there. I found that the one time that I made this soup and I only put one onion because that's all I had left, it was definitely lacking a little bit. Um, so if you like onion, then definitely put lots in there. My recommendation is three onions for this one. Again, just peel the skin off and put that whole thing in there. Um, nice big chunks. They're gonna cook down, cook out, and like I said, we're gonna puree them later anyway. Okay, I'm gonna try to do the onions quickly so that I don't cry from cutting them. <laughs> okay, who cries from cutting onions? Because I'm already starting to feel it right now and I don't wanna cry on my TV show. Ah, okay, quickly, quickly, we're gonna get the ends off, get the skin off. Okay, the tears are coming. <laughs> oh my goodness, okay. These are real tears. Oh, I am going to cut to the next segment after I wipe these tears off my eyes. Okay, I cried it out. 
cleaned up a little bit and I am ready to continue with my soup. So I've got all the ingredients in the pot. Your carrots, your Hurley's butternut squash, onions, and now, now what? Okay, easy peasy. You wanna do a little bit of seasoning. So salt and pepper is always a good one. I like doing the salt and pepper and all the seasoning before I put any liquid in because then I can put the liquid in and it moves all the seasoning around. So again, as much or as little salt and pepper and then pick yourself an herb. Um, I always love dry basil, dry parsley flakes. Um, I wouldn't do anything too pungent because there's going to be some really beautiful sweet flavors here already. However, I like a little kick in this soup because it is so sweet. So I use crushed red pepper flakes as an addition to my soup. So just pour that all in there and then you need your liquid. So I've got a vegetable stock that I like to purchase, uh, one box of that. Um, again, like I said before, you can use whatever kind of stock you want. You can even use just plain old water, and if you season it enough, it'll all bring those flavors out. Now, uh, in terms of how much, that is one like box of stock. I'll probably have to check the measurement on that afterwards. I don't really measure anything. I just use the cup to pour it in nicely. Uh, but you want to cover all the ingredients. So once you put one uh, quart box of stock in, um, you want to cover all of the ingredients with liquid. So instead of using two boxes, which you can if you like that flavor, I just top it up with water. Some good old tap water. So again, I'm not really measuring anything here. I am just adding water so that everything is swimming beautifully and covered under the water. And this is the easiest part of the recipe. You put the lid on, you put it on your stove top, turn it all the way up so you get a simmer and a nice little bubble. And as soon as it starts bubbling, then you can start turning it down a little bit and let it sit probably about 40 minutes or so on that heat so that everything gets all soft and cooked and mushy. Okay, so 40 minutes or so have passed. You turn the heat off, threw in a load of laundry, did some dishes, whatever. Now your vegetables are going to be nice and hot. They're going to be nice and squishy because they've cooked out. Ooh. <laughs> and they're going to be hot. Did I mention they're going to be hot? So remember that coconut milk I told you to keep aside? We definitely want to open that can and have that ready as well. And for this part of the soup, I hope you can see me through all this. <laughs> Um, for this part of the soup, this is where we bring it all together. You need an immersion blender. Now, I like to keep things, again, super simple in the silly kitchen um, because I don't like big tools and I don't like cleaning a ton of stuff. So, uh, the immersion blender is perfect because it's just a little piece that you take off and throw in the dishwasher or hand wash as opposed to pouring this into a blender or doing, I don't know what else you, you can do. I'm sure there's a, a million other ways to blend this but this is my favorite way it's easy it's simple make sure that you're always covering the immersion blender in um, so that you don't get any splash back but just get all your vegetables To lift it to get uh, onto another vegetable just make sure that you turn it off and then you lift it again and then turn it back on can you hear me <laughs> so just keep doing that until your soup is all pureed and there's no chunks left okay so now that you have all of your vegetables pureed you can take this baby out. And now the soup is going to be quite thick. So this is where I like to add my coconut milk. So the one thing I like about coconut milk is it's a lot lighter um, and less calories and fat than adding something like heavy milk or heavy cream uh, into your soup. It also keeps my soups vegan because I used vegetable stock and vegetables. 
and now I'm using coconut milk. So just stir that right in there and you're gonna have a much creamier soup than just having that water and that stock in there. Now if you still think that this is too thick for you, you can here add a little bit more water or a little bit more stock if you uh, choose to, but I am really liking the consistency of this. So I'm gonna put it back onto the stove top for maybe another 15, 20 minutes just to let all of these beautiful flavors marry. I'm gonna taste it, see if it needs any more salt or pepper and finish it off that way. Well, there's only one thing left to do and that's try the soup. I love soup season so much. I hope that this is an easy recipe for you to try at home because it is one of my favorites. And feel free to slurp your soup. <laughs> 